एवरीवन नमस्ते एंड वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज वेंकटेश ऑफ सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साउथ बिहार गया टुडे आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी एंड ऑनलाइन वर्चुअल साइंस लेक्चर सीरीज व्हिच इज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स स्कूल ऑफ फिजिकल एंड केमिकल साइंसेज सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साउथ बिहार गया आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक ऑल द ऑनलाइन पार्टिसिपेंट for showing their interest and taking part in the session 2 season 2 second lecture of science lecture series today we have the pleasure of having one of the renowned observational astronomist very dynamic principal investigator my friend dr santosh joshi ji from arivat research institute of Ar observational research iris manora peak nainital with us i welcome you sir from the bottom of my heart dr santosh jyoti joshi ji will speak on astronomy and astrophysics which is one of the fascinating area of physical sciences topic is a glimpse of the observational astronomy a team of scientists led by dr joshi ji at aris and dr joshi ji is well traveled and well known figure in his area of research he earned his doctorate degree in collaboration between aris and university of cape town south africa with professor ram sagar ji and peter martinage in year 2005 this lecture will be a beautiful blend of experimental physics and its application and i believe should not only attract huge attention from the experimental knowledge loving physics student also the young faculties as i have always mentioned before each lecture that our speakers are renowned and real gem of their area therefore they do not need detailed introduction however for curious participants we have already uploaded his very short cv on the science lecture series website and facebook dear participants colleagues and friends you if you have any query and questions related to the lecture please write them down in the chat box at the end of the lecture coordinator of this science lecture series will ask your question on your behalf once again i welcome you dr joshi ji and we are really grateful to you for accepting our request of delivering today's lecture sharing time with us from your busy schedule with these few words i would like to request dr joshi ji to please deliver his talk on a glimpse of the optical astronomy dr santosh joshi ji please deliver okay thank you very much sir i am my apology for this technical problem uh, really i am very extremely sorry yeah, it's okay, uh, to this disturbance i am uh, i am uh, it, it's my great pleasure to uh, give a uh, talk through webinar i am thankful to bengtesh sir and lakhwinder to give me this opportunity and i am really very very happy you cannot um, i'm 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 sure uh, you will understand my sentiment right uh, last time i tried to i visited to gaya but unfortunately i could not meet to uh, bengtesh sir so i am really thank you uh, for inviting me so today uh, i am talking about uh, uh, something on a glimpse of optical astronomy so glimpse why because i am not covering the whole optical astronomy so just giving a flavor to uh, our students and trying to motivate them to us choose their careers uh, in astronomy and ast astrophysics so here i have uh, written my email address i i i, I uh, really i would be grateful if students or any faculty members contact me through gmail from to our uh, institute email address as well as whatsapp so the first light uh, a glimpse of optical astronomy because why i choose chose this optical astronomy because here we uh, do the ast uh, optical astronomy and the uh, astronomy is basically uh, generally people do in uh, across the whole electromagnetic spectrum and optical uh, where range is the one of the part of the um, this uh, electromagnetic spectrum So first, uh, let me introduce my institute. Uh, here I am from Arivatta Research Institute of Observational Sciences. I am scientist here, 
and um, working here since last uh, two decades. And the um, main um, um, the main objective of this institute mandate of this institute is to promote, guide, and carry out frontline basic research in the area of astronomy, astrophysics, and atmospheric sciences. And the next one is to build and operate state of the art facilities like a telescopes and uh, some um, instruments for uh, our atmospheric science to observe the planets, stars, galaxies, and our Earth atmosphere. Because this astronomy is, as you know, very um, one of the um, fascinating area of the science. So as the as um, the baby um, has some sense, right, or uh, uh, sense of thinking, then always he or she uh, look towards uh, sky, and we see very uh, very fascinating objects in uh, around us. So this is very fascinating science, and most of people like it. And our uh, institute is here at Nainital, which is a tourist place uh, of Uttarakhand state. And also, it located at uh, at a height of one point about two kilometers above the uh, sea level. And a lot of contribution has done uh, by our institute in the area of astronomy and astrophysics, uh, like a discovery of ring of Uranus, detection of millimeter light variation in chemically peculiar stars. That is the area of one of the area I am doing astro seismology. That is that to probe the interior of the stars using the seismic waves uh, about acoustic waves a area similar to uh, we apply in uh, case of the earth seismology and uh, micro lensing survey because uh, the light bend from the various uh, astronomical objects due to their gravity so we also discover such type of objects and the gamma ray highly um, uh, these catastrophic events um, in took place in the galaxy and we observed from our telescopes. And also the ARIES operates India's largest, as well as I would say, Asia's largest optical telescope that is located at Devastal, about 2.5 km altitude and about 60 km towards north of Nainital. And also we are operating at ARIES, operating a highest altitude aerosol observatory where we study the aerosol or uh, the particles which is located in our um, Earth atmosphere. So with introduction of this, our institute, the outline of my talk is, first I will uh, tell you something about the historical perspective of the optical astronomy. Then why we do optical astronomy in Himalayan regions, what is the importance of the optical astronomy and what are the different optical facilities within India and over the globe. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. perfect. Okay. Because I keep on asking you because there's some, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure whether it will continue or not because some disturbance is there. So I keep on, sorry, I will yeah, keep on asking yes. you whether I'm audible or uh, my screen is visible to you. Sorry, right. sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. So, so, so it's very interesting the, about the planetary motion. When we see uh, towards the sky, we see various, um, uh, various planets, right? So if it's simply a layman is there, then we, he will uh, realize that, oh, no, we are not moving. But what is moving? Uh, the uh, stars are moving, the sun is moving, and the, all, all the objects in the sky, they are moving. It's, it's, it's uh, obvious, because we see in the, in the morning, the sun is rising in the east and going up, and then setting in the west. That this, this, this theory was given uh, by Ptolemy in 150 uh, uh, this century ago. And what was his, um, his theory was that the Earth is at the center and Sun, Moon and Mercury and all the celestial objects are taking around the Earth. So that is called the geo geocentric model because the Earth is at the center. But this model um, were failed in uh, explaining many um, facts, uh, such as the um, um, orbital period of different stars, so uh, different planets, right? Then, uh, in, uh, in order to explain these um, various uh, anomaly, Nicholas Copernicus in 1543 century, 
he uh, gave a model uh, to um, explain the motion of the um, planets or the celestial objects in the sky so he postulated that no the uh, the model um, uh, geocentric model is not true but the uh, actual uh, uh, we are not stationary but we are moving and sun is at the um, uh, center of our uh, this uh, milky way right and all the planets are uh, taking around the sun like as mercury is the closest one mercury venus earth moon moon and moon also takes uh, around the earth and then in respective we can say that okay it is taking around the earth and then uh, earth moon system taking around the sun and similarly mars jupiter and saturn so still this copernicus um, uh, theory is still valid and we uh, and it was able to explain many uh, these celestial uh, phenomena or motion of the uh, uh, planets around the uh, sun uh, then then that, how does uh, this history was started uh, you, see, you see when we don't have the clock in our hand or in the mobile now we are using the clock in uh, as a mobile in mobile or mobile phone but if we don't have the mobile if we don't have the clock then how to know that what is the time what would be the time now then we see generally what we see our uh, shadow okay this could be the noon this could be the in the morning this is the morning 11 o'clock or something evening right or it is about to set the sun so similarly we can see uh, the uh, transit of the um, various uh, planets using visual eye uh, like as if the venus is transit you see in 2004 the there was transit of the venus we can see something is uh, uh, crossing the uh, planets uh, ac crossing the sun any planets right so this is the kind kind, kind of rear eye observation right there is no telescope added nothing else so we can see we one can uh, visualize this these uh, uh, facts right so then what in 1609 jonas not jonathan kepler what he did he explained how the planets orbit around the sun and then he he posted three uh, laws of the um, planetary motion so what he what he said he said that uh, the first is the path of the planet around the sun is elliptical in shape right they are not the circular like copernicus and uh, um, they told me they said that the path of the um, moving objects are circular but uh, kepler said no the path of the these uh, uh, planets around the sun uh, is not uh, circular but it is the elliptical and sun is located and the sun is located at one of the focus of the uh, these um, eclipses right so and there are two focus you know uh, and the second motion um, um, second uh, law of the motion was a, a, an imaginary line drawn from the center of the sun to the center of the orbit swept equal area in equal time means you can see like as if you track is some athlete tracks in a, uh, in a path around 400 meter or 1 kilometer then you can see that someone close to the center they have the uh, there is some difference between uh, the, the person who is uh, who is uh, taking uh, out at the near to the center and closing uh, other is away from the that person then so we see that there is some uh, in, uh, some uh, um, we can see that there is difference because the, the nearer one can uh, travel the um, faster or uh, can uh, cover the track uh, in less time okay so he said that, that these um, planets uh, serve equal area in equal time means the planets which are nearer to the sun they move fast and the uh, planets which are um, far away from the uh, suns they, uh, they 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 uh, their speed is uh, low and the third is the ratio of the square of the period of any planets is equal to the uh, ratio of the cube of their average uh, distance from the sun so this is uh, these are the two three uh, laws um, given by the jonathan kepler in 1609 in honor i was here in the honor of the um, um, kepler in uh, two in nine uh, three years ago um to in uh, 19 uh, in 2009 2009 when satellite kepler was launched to um, find the planets um, around our uh, these um, sun uh, similar to our uh, earth uh, sun system so that was the great honor uh, for um, kepler and the satellite was launched in 2009 7th march right 
So that was the great honor for the Jonathan Kepler. So then what happened in 1609, Galileo just discovered the four centimeter telescope. Just he, what he did, he arranged two, um, two uh, lenses and see the um, Jupiter and Sun. And he was able to see uh, the spots of the Sun and nice ring of the Saturn as well the um, moon of the Jupiter that you can see here. If one see from without a telescope, one will see that, okay, these are the um, stars, right? But later uh, it was discovered that these are not the uh, stars, these are um, satellite of the Jupiter, those are taking around the Jupiter, okay? So can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me? Sure. Okay. So <clears throat> then comet. Comet is a very fantastic object, I would say. Uh, nowadays, you you will um, uh, you will notice that one comet uh, new wise is av available in our sky. You can see in the western part. So this Halley comet was um, one of the um, uh, comet discovered by Edmund Halley. That's why its name was in uh, Edmund uh, is Halley comet, and it was discovered in 240 BC. And you see the comet, they, they have the material kind of structure. Why? They are made of the um, ice and dust. And when they they go towards the sun, then move because they move around the sun and the evaporation take place. And then the evaporation is in, in the form of the um, tail. So that's why we uh, say that these are the comets. And these, all the objects uh, can be seen uh, through naked eye without added any telescope, right? <clears throat> then very interestingly there was a theory about the expanding universe means when the our universe started uh, and as a big bang you know the big bang is the um, most acceptable uh, theory now that what it says that at the in, at the beginning the universe was very condensed very compressed and then what happened that there some uh, this blast took place and everything uh, was expanding and since then we see that the, the, our uh, universe is uh, expanding and the Hubble gave this um, law in 1929 that our ex universe is expanding means if we the expanding with the constant rate but later in uh, uh, 1975 it was discovered that it is not um, expanding constantly but it is accelerating so if we see the this graph distance between the um, uh, distance between the recession velocity means as the distance increases the velocity increases means those all galaxies which are very far away from us they are their moon their velocity is um, higher than the uh, galaxy which are closer to us means the galaxy which are very far they are moving faster than the galaxy which are uh, closer to us so this um, uh, hubble constants came into the picture that's but its value is not uh, uh, fixed and still it is people are trying to refine it the more most accepted value is about uh, 75 kilometer per second per um, this kilo per second but still people are thinking that this um, uh, trying to refine this value uh, to uh, explain the various um, uh, facts in the universe right so, so uh, this edwin hubble uh, in the honor of the edwin hubble the one of the telescope was um, launched in 1992 uh, hubble telescope and the main aim of the telescope was to um, find the shifted kind of the pulsator because those are very valuable um, tools to uh, determine the distance of the galaxies in the universe so using those shifted um, uh, um, variables one can determine how far a um, galaxy is located because if we find some gal uh, shifted in that galaxies so this is the expanding universe it was a breakthrough in our, this astronomy and astrophysics then very interestingly the question arises are we really alone who we are exactly or is is similar type of the uh, these um, uh, lives uh, are available in other uh, uh, other uh, part of the galaxy so this exoplanets means planets I, I have already told you the planets in our galaxy those are taking uh, revolving around sun and you can see the sun they are uh, most um, more, most energy of the source is the sun and the, the, but if if planets are taking around the sun it means there are many suns in our galaxies and in our universe are there similar type of the planets around the sun or similar type of the stars and are there 
possibility of life so there are um, such type of the questions are still um, people are trying to uh, give answer and then for that in 1995 michel mayer uh, and um, uh, these uh, colleagues they they said that no okay uh, there are planets uh, there are also planets around the uh, stars uh, out of our galaxies those are called the exoplanets and for that discovery in uh, last year they uh, were awarded the um, nobel prize in uh, physics right and, uh, and what they said they said that what what uh, different uh, it's suppose they are in there all the stars and planets are very far away then how will how will say that okay the star the any object around the sun or that star is uh, a planet or other stars because the star two stars can take around to each other so their discovery was uh, that using the hydrogen spectroscopy one can say that okay this um, uh, this is not the star and that is the planet and planets around uh, our other galaxy those are called the exoplanets this is also a remarkable discovery in the, in our uh, this astronomy and astrophysics can you hear me sir can you hear yes. me Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now laboratory. If you see the students, see they 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 might be realizing that how the laboratory are important in our uh, these uh, schooling and uh, graduation and post graduation, because without laboratory, without practice, it's very difficult to have any feeling. So this astronomy and astrophysics, we have also the similar type of the lab um, laboratory, but they are giant laboratory, right? So one can study the physical and chemical processes. What are the physical processes going on? what are the different radiation is taking place what are the you know, process of various chemical elements inside the inside the star right so what are the various galaxies what's going to take inside this galaxy what's going to take inside the stars how are the planetary system at, uh, exactly because as we have the um, various technology with a telescope a lot of um, problem comes in probably in the sense that because we are looking them minutely right and what are the interstellar material uh, matter inside the uh, between the galaxies and uh, stars right so these our astronomy astrophysics is a giant natural laboratory and in that laboratory the temperature is huge 10 to power 6 to 10 to power 8 kelvin i can i, I just I would, i would like to mention here the uh, surface temperature of the sun is 5777 kelvin and here the temperature go up to 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 8 kelvin in the core of the star or sun right and you can see the water boils at 100 centigrade right for example and density my 10 to the power minus 24 so less density up to 10 to the power 12 gram per centimeter cube and then the lower density correspond to the interstellar the matter between the stars and the higher density correspond to the density of the um, neutron stars how how compact these uh, objects are in our uh, sky right and the, also they have a large range of the mass from 0.1 solar mass to 100 solar mass and um, mass of the sun and so mass of the sun is equal to 10 to the power 33 gram you can see means in our galaxy a star of 1.1 0.1 solar mass to 100 solar mass of the star can exist and similarly in the galaxies we have 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 13 masses of the galaxies multiplied by the mass of the sun so you can see how range of this temperature and this parameter because in order to have some thing to study we have we need the basic parameter these are the um, gas law even you might have heard about the what we need we need the temperature we need the density we need the pressure we need the mass so if we have this parameter we can study any system or the integer of any system very precisely so with the astronomy as astrophysics laboratory we can say that how much we have contributed in mean, astronomy as to physics is contributed in physics right you see the law of the gravity it was it came from the from the astronomy as to physics newton law right newton law of the gravitation right and simply they were applied between earth and sun right general theory of the relativity you know einstein gave the general theory of the relativity this is also from part of the astronomy and astrophysics concept of nuclear fusion nowadays atom bomb and all these they came from the astronomy and astrophysics because uh, astronomers discover what what type of reaction are taking place in the core of the sun 
so they try to have similar type of the energy that can uh, can uh, get uh, if you fuse the two uh, four hydrogen nuclei into the two uh, helium nuclei right and similar then kind of cosmology and high energy particle physics cosmology how our universe is made of and how these high energy particle physics are behaving right and due to these all these contribution there are seven an uh, nobel prize were uh, given to the um, area of the astronomy and astrophysics in last 40 years you can say that how important the area of the astronomy and astrophysics is so <clears throat> if we compare uh, to the laboratory physics means we we cannot we cannot produce such high temperature we cannot produce high high pressure we cannot produce high mass in our uh, daily uh, this life but what what we can do you see we can have the matter example we can have the lunar material material we can have the inter space probes right those can be uh, act as a laboratory physics right and definitely the astronomy astrophysics is not an experimental this is an observational science because we cannot perform any experiment right uh, at this temperature we cannot it's very difficult to produce 10 to the power 7 and 10 to the power 8 kelvin temperature at this um, at the uh, surface of the earth so uh, now <clears throat> if you see if you see the stars star what is they are the very bright they, they are they are very interesting twinkle twinkle little star how i am under what you are above or oh, you see this is this point you have seen right and the stars are very far away or they are twinkling right and the light comes through the interstellar space there is a lot of space between us and the uh, star and as they enter into the earth atmosphere then due to the earth atmosphere they attenuate their light is attenuated the degradation of the point source if you see that the uh, origin the star light is the star look like as a point source but at the uh, the star light reach at the earth we see the twinkling due to the earth atmosphere so you may you know that why the um, the star twinkle because due to the uh, earth atmosphere the density is different at the different level and you show you know when the um, light um, pass from one medium to the other the light bends right so this uh, refraction of the light and also the um this uh, refractive index is also take um, uh, play important role we see the stars twinkle right can you hear me sir sure okay yes. <clears throat> so now because now what well, now if the light is coming from the star right it is passing through the interstellar meter then entering into the uh, earth atmosphere then what happens what happens because the light star light has a different energy source means the the range of the energy is from um, this gamma ray to the um, this radio wavelength ray right so different range of the energy is there so if we see the transparency of the at our earth atmosphere right so the uh, earth is transparent only for the optical range right the, from the 3600 to 7000 angstrom right so only of that range we can detect that is called the visible um, range of the light electromagnetic spectrum you can see here in video right but less than uh, these um, uh, this um, less than 3000 uh, angstrom we cannot uh, receive uh, any energy uh, part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is absorbed by our earth atmosphere in order to study these um, uh, these um, energy sources we have to go beyond the uh, earth atmosphere that's why various x ray ultraviolet gamma ray telescopes are launched in the uh, space to study these uh, energy sources right and only the visible light are observed from the earth that's why all this is called also the optical range that's why this optical astronomy because the optical uh, lights reaches at the surface of the earth and we can see these um, uh, these uh, due to this optical range we can see the various objects in our uh, neighborhood right and similarly the um, uh, infrared uh, in infrared generally they can penetrate to our earth atmosphere and uh, generally they uh, also do not reach at the ground of the earth but means at a low uh, uh, low elevation so for the detection of the infrared uh, infrared uh, photons we have to go with higher at high altitude like as uh, at henley there is a 2 meter uh, optical telescope that is used basically for the 
infrared. So that's we have to go at the higher altitude. Similarly, at the Nanital, this is at 2.5 kilometer. Here, the, this place is very good for the uh, infrared um, astronomy as well. And if you see that the right hand side, we have the complete full uh, this transmission at radio wave um, um, wavelength range. And due to this, our uh, the wavelength um, uh, coverage in the wavelength radio waves is maximum. And that's why you can see that the, we have a very big ground, uh, this giant meter radio telescope at uh, Pune, where we have been using 30 meter diameter uh, disc. About and um, there are about 45 uh, dishes to collect the light of um, radio waves coming from the um, celestial sources. So, but <clears throat> but not only the opticals are important, but all the um, all the part of the electromagnetic spectrums are important. So, in order to detect um, these um, all the part of the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, people have um, established various type of the uh, telescope, like as 100 meter Green Bank uh, Telescope in United States. That is the uh, largest singly uh, single um, this dish telescope of 100 meter dies. Uh, one, one meter, uh, 100 meter diameter, and in India, it is only 30 meter diameter. And similarly, in um, uh, this ALMA, Atakma Large Millimeter Array, this telescope is uh, in the Chile uh, desert, Atakma uh, desert, and they have also uh, this um, um, uh, telescope of about 15 uh, meter diameter. Similarly, we have the infrared astronomical satellites to um, study the infrared uh, sources coming from the uh, sources, astrono these uh, astronomical sources. Similarly, the para, um, uh, Paranal Observatory VLT, they have the visible, that is even we have the also such type of the telescope. Also, we have the infrared ultraviolet explorer, basically this international ultraviolet explorer that is to detect the ultraviolet um, energy coming from the astronomical sources. Similarly, we have the Chandra Transpace uh, Craft, that's X-ray observatory, and that is the name of the, our um, genius Chandra Shikha who was awarded um, this Nobel Prize and the name of that was the Chandra uh, spacecraft. And similarly, we have the uh, Integral International Gamma Ray Astrophysics Laboratory, Integral, that is basically used to study the gamma rays uh, coming from the uh, interior of the stars or galaxies, okay? So as I said that um, uh, all the part of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum are equally important. So here I have shown you that how the, uh, our galaxy looks like in different um, uh, this energy band. So if you see the uh, top um, left, you will, uh, you can see here that uh, in red, in optical, in red, how the um, this our galaxy is looking. And if you come, uh, if you just go in the right of that one, you can see how in infrared it is looking I. Right? And similarly, you can see uh, in different um, wavelength band how our um, galaxy will look like if we change uh, the um, uh, if we change the um, this uh, spectrum, electrodomestic spectrum of different uh, wavelength range. So you can see here you can clearly see that uh, different part of the um, uh, our galaxy is emanating different type of the um, uh, this. Uh, uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So each each part of the galaxy can be can be easily can be only studied in detail if we have the combined uh, energy uh, this um, uh, from all the um, all part of the electromagnetic that is called the uh, multiband or multiband study. That's why nowadays the uh, this era is the multi-band study of the uh, celestial sources because in a single um, band you cannot get all the information. So you have you should have the uh, multi-wavelength study, multi-wavelength. That's why we have the optical in India, optical telescope. We have the gamma ray telescope. We have the uh, radio telescope. We have the infrared telescope because each each is each part of the uh, spectrum gives an uh, unique uh, information to study them. <clears throat> so the, now I'm coming on the optical astronomy. This is very interesting because we can, due to the uh, this visible wavelength range, we can see the various type of object 
Uh, otherwise, we would have not seen. We cannot see the, the with our um, eye. We cannot see with the um, all this uh, gamma ray or X ray or any type because this our eye is sensitive only for the um, uh, this visible uh, optical, right? So this optical astronomy is as old as human civilization because as our eye act as an optical telescope, right? We in optical in telescope what we have either we have the lens, so we have the lens in our um, eye. And then detector, we have the retina that detects the light, and then analyzer. What it, it our brain analyzes the data, whatever the light is uh, striking at the retina. So our eye is the best telescope, detector, and analyzer. But only the problem with the eye is that we cannot, our eye cannot store the light or any images. Suppose if we see something, we cannot show that, okay, we in our brain that uh, I can say that, okay, I saw today something, but I cannot, um, uh, uh, I cannot, uh, I can share with our um, uh, gearer and nearer, but I cannot show them what I have seen, right? So this is the only the uh, disadvantage with the eye, right? And this, um, uh, these um, optical astronomy is very, very uh, extremely valuable for the astrophysical studies. And recent development in computers, electronic, and other area have contributed significantly to growth of the optical telescope, detector, and image and research. Without the uh, advanced technology, engineering, we would have not get so success. Because uh, in, if you see, I will show you in the next slides that how the older telescopes uh, were there and how the new telescopes have been developed with the new technology. So these, uh, what are the importance of the optical observation? So the optical observation are still just in estimating certain parameters like distance, age, and abundant det det uh, determination of most astronomical events are still just determined at the optical bands. Because stars and galaxies are so far away, we have only the photons coming out from there. So with the photons, we can say that, uh, okay, which of which element this star is made of? whether it is made of hydrogen, or it is made of helium, or it is made of iron, or any element, just using the photons coming from the star. So this is very interesting area of the science, right? For like at the gamma ray burst, which is very uh, catastrophic uh, events in our galaxy, were different, discovered in late 60 with the, uh, while the distance were estimated only distance for the afterglow objects in the optical. So this, whatever the theory um, was um, given in uh, late 90s, late 60s or 70s, but those were only confirmed with the help of the optical observation. So in order to have the complementary information, we need the X-ray observation. As I told you that we need, we want to have the uh, complete information about that objects that can be only done if we study them using X-ray, gamma ray, infrared, or other um, uh, radio band or other part of the electron spectrum. That enabled discovery of the new objects as quasar, pulsar. However, to establish the true nature of these of the optical objects are very indispensable just because a wealth of knowledge on atomic and molecular transistors still come from the bands at optical and near infrared and uh, near infrared and infrared bands. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. So now, <clears throat> now I'm coming on the telescopes, and this important. This is very important for the, our uh, students who are attending this talk because whenever they go for the um, interview for sub, uh, any astronomical institute, generally the first question is the what is the telescope, right? The people say that, okay, if you are coming here for the research, then you should have the knowledge of the telescope. So what are the basic, what the telescope in telescope is? Actually, what the telescope is does, it image the very far object very close to us, and we can see the fine detail about the star or any object. This is a just definition of the telescope, right? And that, um, optics is very important in the telescope because optics will tell us that how sharp image we can build at the focus of our telescope, right? So simple telescopes, right? Um, and we have the magnification because uh, our eye is, um, a, as I told you, there is a telescope, uh, right? But eyes have the, do not have the much magnification. We can magnify, magnify mean how magnify, magnify we can uh, any object, right? And the brightness, 
because the telescope using the telescope we have we can um, we can uh, detect the various brightness of um, uh, sources in the sky and resolution resolution if i see here how uh, we can resolve two uh, objects close by objects right so if we are, there are two objects very close those who have the very good eye they can say okay these are the two ob objects and those who have the poor eye uh, side they can say no no this is the uh, one object so that is called the uh, resolution and uh, there are two type of the telescope the uh, first one the reflector where the um, um, primary or the objective and the eyepiece they uh, there we use the um, only the lenses but the lenses have the achromatic um, aberration means different um, uh, wavelength um, uh, rays uh, focus at different uh, place so uh, we do not have the sharp images so but in order to overcome this problem we uh, generally people use that reflecting telescope where uh, we use the mirror instead of the lenses right so those are the and big uh, telescope are of the reflecting kind because uh, there's um, this uh, achromatic aberration can be um, removed as well as we can we can uh, in lenses we can only um, uh, fix it on the rim but in case of the um, uh, these um, uh, uh, mirror uh, or in reflecting uh, telescope we can um, uh, give it support from the back end right from anywhere right and these are the very important uh, about the reflecting uh, telescope and they are and the big telescope uh, um, and this um, their surface uh, um, polishing is um, important and it is very can be done easily in case of the reflecting and also the now the segmented mirror can be um, made in the case of the reflector that is not possible in the reflector because if we heard if you might have heard about the 10 meter telescope 20 meter 30 a single mirror piece cannot be uh, have the so big so people what they do they they make small small one meter two meter size uh, mirror and then they um, uh, join them segmented telescope so big telescope are the segmented so that is not possible in case of the reflector and there are two type of the mounting in the telescope equatorial means we our this axis of the telescope is pointed to the our north pole means the north uh, this uh, north star pole and the our axis of our telescope they are aligned so any of the because all the objects moves around the north pole so one can uh, track these um, objects uh, uh, very accurately in case of the equatorial but um, uh, there is some problem also in equator now people are uh, big telescope has um, are coming uh, are being established in the um, uh, ultra azimuth um, uh, mounting where um, the telescope moves in the both the direction uh, in um, altitude direction as well in azimuth in horizon as well in vertical and one very important thing about the installation of telescope is atmospheric seeing the our atmosphere there's a turbulence a lot of turbulence in our atmosphere so generally people select the site where the atmosphere turbulence is very least means their seeing is very good so the seeing only thing will be very good where the atmospheric turbulence is least so that here i have seen that what happens in the objective we can have a convex lens and, and there is one eyepiece that um, uh, that uh, see the um, whatever light is being uh, converged at a point and that we can see the image of the object using the eyepiece and the magnification parameters that is um, defined as the focal length of the uh, objective lens divided by the focal length of the eyepiece it means the magnification can only be increased when we have the big uh, these um, focal length uh, um, focal length of the uh, primary um, uh, lenses are more means we need have the more distance it means we the tube length should be very uh, long right then only our magnification can be increased because the focal length it is very difficult to uh, reduce make minimum the focal length of the eyepiece so uh, either we can uh, using the uh, lower um, focal length eyepiece we can uh, have the higher magnification um, so these are the um, so better the better telescope is which have the higher magnifications right so these are the um, uh, theory of the uh, this telescope right so basically um, the for the observer for the research we have we should have the analyzer 
instead of the uh, IP, we use the some detector like a spectrophotometer, CCD photometer that store the light coming from the uh, that light coming from the stars, right? So just as I told you, you can see here the um, uh, I is our the best uh, detector, best telescope. Here you can see the one lens is there, that convex lens, and it focuses to the light on our retina. And our retina also changes uh, according to the size of the object. You can see here in the two um, uh, uh, two figures. So bottom and top. So our um, this focal length, everything change automatically. But in case of the uh, telescope. If the telescope is coming, we are taking any telescope that has had the fixed focal length. But beauty of our eye telescope is that it can have the very well focal length. So it can have the um, different, uh, various magnification, right? And similarly, you can see um, uh, that our eye has the pupil have the diameter of two millimeter, right? So, because, uh, because it contracts and expands, so for the bright object, it, object, it can have the diameter of 2 mm, for the normal light, it has the 5 mm, and for the dark, it expands and its diameter is the 8 mm. So, it's flexible um, uh, diameter uh, telescope our eye, right? So, no telescope detector is as good as our eye, right? And very interesting. What could be the field of view? Means how how big how big area we can see with our eye? You can just imagine about 120 degree uh, sky uh, part of the our sky we can see. But with the telescope, we cannot see just big um, field of view. So as I told you, uh, due to these uh, disadvantages of the um, reflectors, so we generally we use the reflector telescope. The advantage no chromatic aberration, no spherical aberration, mirrors can be supported at the back, improved techniques for make it, uh, making these uh, telescope like as liquid mirrors and uh, ultra uh, these uh, glasses. So this is the um, um, first reflector, one inch telescope and that uh, was the one of the uh, advancement in building the telescope uh, for the astronomical observation. So that is the breakthrough in this um, astronomy astrophysics research because uh, the main aim of the telescope is to gather the light. So as big as that size of the telescope, we'll have the more light, more photons coming from the uh, stars, right? So one of the system uh, called the Cassegrain. So uh, that is what we, um, all the telescopes generally we have in India and um, most of the part of the um, world that are the Cassegrain, very simple system. What we do, just a primary is a parabolite and uh, then secondary you can see other part and there is a hole at the center of the um, primary mirror and at the end we have the detector, right? right? So we can, uh, even we can um, support the primary mirror from the back side and the secondary is smaller and it uh, converts the light to the detector, right? So this is most favored for the large size research telescope and say secondary mirror has a narrow cone because as narrow as our cone or our uh, this converging back telescope is best right and also this has the telephoto advantage we can take the photographs uh, when we put our um, camera at the detector part right so this is also telephoto advantage it's very difficult if we uh, the detector is the other part of the um, uh, this primary so it's very difficult to fix the uh, our um, camera over there and these days got the small field of view and but the sharp focus because the sharp focus the minimum criteria to have a good telescope then only we'll have the very very bright circular object so the main as i told the main aim, the main objective of the telescope is the light gathering power the, the Best telescope which has the more, more gathering power, light gathering power, and the light gathering power is defined as the uh, is directly proportional to the diameter of the telescope. So as you are, uh, as the diameter of the telescope is more and more, our the light gathering power will be more, right? And so that is directly proportional. Even there is the uh, inversely proportional to the diameter of the pupil of the eye. Yeah, up to some extent, we can reduce the diameter of the pupil of the eye, but it is almost fixed. And the, also the one important is the loss due to the optics and detector. We always keep in mind that the loss due to the optical elements should be minimized. 
otherwise we we'll, our whatever light we are, our um, this primary mirror is gathering that will be uh, our loss because whatever effort we are making to gather the light it is uh, lose it is losing due to the optics so that has to be taken account right and also the signal to noise ratio that is important in our astronomical observation because signal to noise ratio means what signal we are getting from the um, star and what are the various noises coming due to the detector due to the our um, uh, engineering and uh, that is also important so our signal to noise ratio would be high as high possible so that is also um, uh, proportional to the integration time means for how long we are going to integrate uh, to the our object up to some extent we cannot we cannot integrate our um, the ccd or camera for 10 hours or so because that also the noise comes into the um, this picture so um, that is proportional to the integration time and that is also um, proportional to the um, this ob um, uh, brightness of the object a and b uh, sky brightness and uh, the diameter of the telescope a right so these are the parameters which dictates that the uh, what type of the um, uh, observation we are getting sometimes it happens that we have the very big telescope but we lose the uh, these uh, light due to various reasons as i um, uh, mentioned so am i audible sir can can someone confirm am i uh, audible sure. okay yes 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 you are audible you okay, are audible okay thank you very much so and um, now uh, resolving power of the telescope as i told you in the beginning it's of the the main aim of the telescope is to resolve two nearby objects if you put an uh, wall there are two objects so those who have the very good eyesight they can see okay there are two objects but uh, the old people like as um, bankester and other senior people who are using their glasses they say no 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 this is only one object so that is the main aim of our telescope because eye is also a telescope how how separately we are how we are able to separate two objects in the uh, sky so that the resolving power is uh, in, um, defined as the 1.22 lambda upon d very important lambda very important and inversely proportional d diameter is very important you see the diameter the resolution power can be uh, increased when we in, uh, increase the diameter of the telescope right so that is okay but the lambda is also very important you see lambda when the lambda is increased means for the gamma ray uh, for the gamma ray or um, lower part of the uh, visible they have the shorter uh, wavelength but as we go the higher wavelength like as the radio wave you will have the higher resolution power so uh, we have to have the higher wavelength to um, have the uh, high resolving power because you see um, for the optical we cannot change for the optical our peak is around 5500 angstrom that is fixed right peak so we can only increase our resolving power by increasing by increasing the means resolving power less means that is better resolving power less means that is better okay here i am telling you because you can um, separate two nearby object very close nearby object it means their distance is small that is the um, that value should be less right so that value can be only minimized when our diameter of the telescope is higher right so um, so the resolving power uh, for the various uh, at, at, at optical you can see uh, at 5500 Uh, is about um, uh, 14 arc second divided by the diameter depend upon diameter whatever is your uh, diameter of our telescope so for our eye as i told you the eye has the 5 mm diameter in normal way uh, this one so it has a range 15 to 90 arc second means any object between 15 to 90 arc second can be resolved nicely but if any object which is very close less than 950 arc second that cannot be resolved right but with the telescope of 3.6 meter 4 meter we can uh, resolve but two object which are very close of sub arc second less than 1 arc second 
this is the meaning of what I want to convey here. Here you can see one uh, diagram here. You can see the two stars are very close, but they are not resolved. But we can see that, okay, these are two stars. But if we see with our eye and small telescope, this you can see only one star. But with the bigger telescope, we can see this is not the these are not the, this is not a single object, but these are there are two stars. They are uh, closed systems, right? So typical that is that is also called the typical scene, and this resolution power also depends on the scene atmosphere, how our atmosphere is acting. Means if our if the turbulence is very good, means high turbulence, we can that have the very good scene. Right, so seeing also um, uh, dictates what type of the resolution is there. For like as our um, this Devastar, our seeing is about 0.5 arc second. So, so we can very uh, nicely resolve uh, these um, uh, any object which are 0.5 arc second separated by uh, two objects, right? Because they are at Devastar. Because what about if I am saying 0.5 arc, uh, arc second? Their telescope objects is also included. Their diameter of the telescope is also included. They are the seeing also is included. So the combination due to a combination of the diameter of the telescope uh, wavelength um, and this uh, lambda and the uh, at this site is um, I have combined. Then I am saying that we can just resolve of 0.5 arc second. Arc second arc second is nothing. Only the unit of the angle. So you know that um, 24 hours is about 360 degree. So and one degree is equal to 60 arcs a minute. One arc a minute is equal to 60 arc second. So these are the unit of the angle. If I am saying arc second, right? So the resolving power of the telescope has been uh, drastically improved in last um, um, uh, few decades. You can see here I have plotted a diagram between year and the uh, resolution. If you see in 14 up to 1600, our human eye was the only the telescope detector. So the resolution about what about 70 arc second, as I told you, 15 to 90 arc second, right? You can see here. In 1600, Galileo after the dis uh, after the uh, discovery of, uh, of the telescope by Galileo, five cent four centimeter or five centimeter, the resolution power increased. It, increase up to it reduce up to uh, 10 arc second and when the Palomar 5 meter telescope came into the existence in 2000 and its resolution was about one arc second and the, and now I have told you our uh, the Devastal telescope at 3.6 meter telescope at Devastal they have uh, this resolution about 0 .5, 0 0.5 arc second you can see how drastically the resolution has been uh, uh, improved and for the Hubble Space Telescope, because I told you, seeing Earth atmosphere is also one of the main contributors to decide the seeing. But because Hubble Space Telescope is beyond the Earth atmosphere, so they are seeing is about 0.1 arc second. That cannot be achieved from the ground because here we are limited with the Earth atmosphere. We cannot beat the uh, Hubble Space Telescope, right? So um, generally, these telescopes are um, established at the uh, place where the turbulence is very less. So um, here at Nainital, we um, uh, have a few telescopes. One you can see in the right side, one white dome. That is the one meter telescope. And so the, this uh, observatory is located about two kilometer above the ground level. And very good site you can see. But that when the, this observatory is the very good, but recently now in a um, uh, few decades the site is deteriorated due to the pollution, uh, either you can say that's a light pollution or uh, there's um, other kind of the pollution, but it is um, slightly uh, degraded and for that uh, this one meter telescope you can see that telescope was uh, is established in 1972 and we then one solar telescope is there because here we you we study the both the stars and suns uh, for the sun we do not need the big telescope because we have the plenty of the photons no need of the many photons but for the night sky we the stars and galaxies are very faint and we need um, um, more um, photons and then for that we need the big telescopes Similarly, we have the 50 centimeter Schmidt telescope. These Schmidt telescopes are generally used to cover the um, larger field of view because the bigger telescope, the 
bigger the telescope the field of view is equal to smaller and the smaller the telescope means the uh, uh, field of view is inversely proportional to the diameter of the telescope you can say because I, uh, our i can our i can sustain the area of about 120 degree as i told you but the big as, as we increase the size of the telescope the field of view is equal to is inversely proportional to uh, diameter sir so it reduces right so these are the you know, few telescopes um, uh, installed at nanital and you can see here our 15 cm solar telescope that is used for the um, to observe the sun you can see the uh, in the left side left, left um, figure you can see the how blue sky here it is right that is the that is, that makes importance our observations right so but in plain it that is very difficult to have such blue sky right and you know why the um, sky is blue right so here the 1 meter um, we have the 1 meter sample and telescope that was in, as i told you in 1972 and mostly we use here the this telescope for the stellar variability and about more than 60 uh, phd thesis has come out from the observation from this telescope i, I would be very happy if some of you uh, are uh, next to use the um, data from this telescope and will i will have really honor to if i uh, have such any students from your university to be one of the um, uh, students who uh, who um, write thesis on the data taken from this uh, telescope uh, or any other telescope which are uh, which are available at arizonani sure So now um, people have been using various type of telescope, bigger telescope, bigger because uh, as I told you, as we increase the diameter of the telescope, the light gathering power as as the uh, this resolution improves, right? So there are various telescopes are uh, established in from 1970 to 74. You see four meter telescope, and uh, in 1999 uh, means this three point um, three to four meter telescopes are established between 1970 to 2000, right? so it was also then it was realized that uh, we should have also one 3 to 4 meter telescope uh, at uh, in india right so there was effort um, and made so you can see here also in globe there are these um, uh, these red circles are the 3 to 4 meters on class telescope and you can see there's gap there's gap around the um, 79 degree where is our location so there was requirement to have such uh, 3 point uh, or 3 to 4 meter class telescope at this location where the india is located that will fill to gaps in the data as well as the time uh, critical observation so our our lo our location is very important for this uh, in context of the globe right so but you see uh, if we install any telescope that is the uh, this light pollution does matter right so if you see the i in the first uh, in the left part i have seen you the the map of the india uh, during the night you see how pollution is there so where the light pollution is there it's where there's no use to establish the telescope so but you can see here the himalayan region and the top of around and, and the lay there's uh, least uh, light pollution so then people thought that why not to instead the telescope uh, at this himalayan region that's why 2 meter telescope was uh, established in 2000 at leh that is giving very nice results so, so similar that but the telescope is used for the infrared observation as i told you at the uh, sea level or just above the sea level the infrared um, uh, infrared um, radiation uh, absorbs right so for the infrared observer we have to go at high at high latitude attitudes right so this is the part is the center himalaya and you can see here the sun this round circle is the our location here so they, that's why it was realized that we should have one 3 to 4 meter class telescope in himalayan region so here you can see the optical astronomy uh, so from plains to himalaya and to universe you can see here if you get opportunity uh, please do visit our observatory you can Uh, in addition to the telescope and astronomical uh, events you can see the beautiful uh, spectacular view of the himalaya from our place okay so sir can am i am i audible
Sure, sir. Sure. sure. Okay. So I I I I, I, I invite all of you uh, here uh, to please visit uh, do visit us. And I am ready to host you. And in, uh, I, this is Thank my you. invitation, uh, personal invitation, right? As soon Thank as you, you need sir. any invitation from the our institute, I would, I will also, I would be happy to do that uh, favor for you. Please. Uh, so you can see here, this is the Devastal. This is our 2.5 meter uh, above the sea level. You can see here the dome, right? The dome is here. Um, you can see the left uh, at the left uh, left part of the image. This dome is there. This 3.6 meter telescope. In the right side, you can see our 1.3 meter telescope. This is the highest peak of this region. You can see here, and from here you can see direct, directly you can see the Himalaya, this Himalaya peaks, right? So this is 1.3 meter Devastar optical telescope, and this telescope is operational since 2010. And here this is 3.6 meter telescope uh, that was first light was seen in 2016, and also one 4 meter liquid mirror telescope is um, almost uh, this constructed, and we are expecting the first light in 2020. If I say the liquid mirror telescope, it means the liquid mirror, this um, mercury is being used for the reflection of the light instead of the mirror, right? So this liquid is acting as a mirror, particularly the, uh, this, um, this mercury, right? So this you can see here, this characteristics of the parameters of the Devasta sites. And so at very nice, um, place for the uh, uh, observation astronomy and here you can see the uh, various parameters and we get about 200 because we we astronomers like um, clear sky and but the farmer may not like the clear sky they prefer the um, uh, rain and uh, this one for their um, this um, harvesting but we 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 like we prefer the clear sky so anyway these uh, here the we have the um, small um, part of the farming, but uh, uh, clear nights are about 210 per year. That is a very good number as far as the uh, uh, as far as the other sites are concerned. Uh, and this is the you can see the uh, this uh, top view of the uh, Devastal, and you can see the dome. And at the right side, you see the Devastal temple is there. So the the name of this um, place is on the the Devastal the temple of the Lord Shiva. So this uh, telescopes, uh, you can see there's no nearby peaks and this uh, telescope is working since 2016 and regular observation is being done from 2016 and basically to see the faint galactic and galact extra galactic sources. As I told you, the um, main, aim, the main aim the telescope is the light gathering um, uh, power. So as we increase the size of the telescope, the uh, light gathering power will be more, so we can probe the fainter objects in the sky, right? So this is the inner view of the telescope, you can see. When you come here, you should try, and because here we, uh, we, we undertake many programs for the students, to, for the short-term projects and for the small visit. So it would be nice if you uh, can make some visit, can make some, uh, arrange some visit of the students as well, sir. So it would be nice. So you, this telescope is a three point, very nice telescope uh, for the optical uh, astronomy. So this telescope was um, um, in, 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 inaugurated by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and um, these um, Belgian Prime Ministers, Charles. Um, Mr. Charles in 2031st March 2016 uh, remotely. Um, so this uh, since then the telescope is working very nicely. And also as I told you here that we have one uh, very in, um, uh, very near future we'll have the four meter liquid mirror telescope. You can see here the bowl uh, where the Amos is just below the Amos. Here the bowl of the um, mercury and the light will come from the top and then it will reflect it to the secondary. This is not the classic grain, I can tell you, because the, there is no hole in between, right? So the, our, uh, this um, uh, detector is the, on the top of the, uh, where it is written Amos, right? So basically this telescope will be used for the survey of the distance quasi supernova. And this is the largest telescopes in the world. No such telescope has been built, uh, this is big telescope has been built for uh, such uh, survey purpose. So this is the largest um, telescope uh, in the world. 
Now let me give you one small um, flavor of the astronomical sites in India. Here I have seen you the various uh, sites. Henle, we have the two meter. Nainital, we have the one meter um, largest. Gurushikar, Mount Abu, we have the 1.4 meter. Also, they are going to install one 2.5 meter telescope by 2021. So you can see how fascinating this area is. The government is free hand to give money to install telescopes, right? Two meter we have, 2.5 meter is coming, 3.6 meter is coming, one meter we have, four meter we have. So that's why a very good um, opportunity to make the career in this area. We have the Giravali telescope in Ayuka. You must have heard about the Ayuka in the University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. This is basically for the university people and they have the two meter telescopes, right? And we have also 1.2 meter telescope in Hyderabad, also uh, 2.3 meter telescope in Kavalu that was built in India itself. So this um, uh, this 25 centimeter reflector telescope was built in 1955 when the when the observatory was shifted from Banaras to Pale. Uh, it was in uh, Banaras and then it was shifted in 1955 in Manura Peak and with one fifty uh, in 25 centimeter 10 inch telescope our observation started. So here at the 38 centimeter reflector telescope. This is also at uh, Manura Peak Nantan, but now it's not operational. And we have 52 centimeter reflector telescope. That telescope is now used for other purpose. And similarly, we have 56 centimeter that is um, used for the CIMIC telescope for the um, survey purpose. Then this is the one meter telescope, very productive telescope and operational since 1972. And in 2022, we are going to celebrate 50 years of this telescopes, right? Golden Jubilee of this telescope. So this is, and also the replica of the one, our one meter telescope is uh, also in, in, uh, in, uh, established in Kavlu, in, that is being um, operated by Indian Institute of Astrophysics. And, but uh, due to the site is not good, so this telescope is not so productive. As I told you, only the diameter of the telescope doesn't um, uh, matter, but our the site is also um, um, uh, important, equally important. So this telescope, that's a replica of our telescope. And this 2.34 meter Venugopu telescope, this is a very big telescope, but the site is not good. So that is also not being uh, used frequently, right? But because the um, weather is not, um, uh, per, uh, weather doesn't permit there for the um, regular observation, because whenever I go there, there's uh, this uh, weather doesn't allow to us to uh, observe, right? So they are 1.2 meter telescope. This is as Hyderabad. Japal Rangapur and this telescope is very old in 1980 it was established but I don't know whether it is operational or not. This 1.2 meter telescope at Mount Abu this is also used for the infrared observation and they are going to use as I told you they are going to be uh, installed one 2.5 meter telescope in next year and this Henle at altitude of 4.5 kilometer above the sea level one two meter telescope was established in 2000. That telescope is giving very nice results and still operates since 2000. And two meter Ayuka telescope for the university people. I don't know whether there's some technical problem, but I, uh, university people should um, go there and they have been you know, using um, since, I mean, when I was at Ayuka in 2005, then I also used this telescope for my observation. But recently there's some technical problem came and they are um, going to rectify it. And very soon, I'm I'm sure that this telescope will be operational. And here we have the 1.3 meter telescope, and that was established in 2010. And because here I'm showing in the chronological order, from the old to the new one. So this was developed in 2010. So here you can see the how the aperture of the telescope was. Uh, um, uh, improved. Improved means how the uh, how the uh, this graph between the ear and the aperture uh, diameter. How the diameter of telescope was increased with the time. You can see from the Galileo at the um, uh, bottom left, and now you can see VLT uh, these um, VLT eight meter telescope or cat ten meter maximum cat at the right. Uh, top that's 10 meter cat telescope is there so of, of size 10 meter so here as i told you there are two types of the reflect uh, uh, telescope one the refractor and the other uh, is the reflector in reflector we have the achromatic aberration but the maximum 
high, larger size of the um, uh, diameter of the drift shaft is one meter. That is that year observatory, and that was built in 1897. This is the uh, largest uh, refractor telescope uh, available in the globe. And this is a two meter Hooker telescope. This telescope was built in 1917, and this is Los Angeles uh, in USA and still working. And this is the Palomata telescope. This still is um, uh, in USA, and this telescope is also being used for the survey purpose, right? And you can see the uh, the weight of the mirror, 20 tons, and the moving parts of the telescope is 530 tons. You can see, okay. And similarly, and you can see how big their um, dome is there. But the new technology and the weight of the dome is equal to 1000 tons and diameter is about 42 meters, right? So you can see that now the new technology reduces these weight and size of the uh, dome as well. So in 1950, these are the 1.2 meter Palomar Schmidt telescope for the survey. So also these are all the, these telescopes uh, around the globe in chronological order. Right? And 3 meter Lick telescope, this 3 meter Lick telescope. And this telescope was um, I am, uh, built in uh, 1959, uh, right? And this is in uh, California. Right, and this four meter KPNO and CTIO telescope 9070. So you can see four meter telescope it will have established in 9070. And we um, we got this telescope. We uh, we were able to uh, commission this telescope in 2016. So you can um, you can imagine right. So this 3.6 meter in ISO exactly and similar to our telescope uh, size, but not exactly the uh, configuration was established in 1979 and 3.6 meter similar telescope in Canada, France, Hawaii telescope, CFST in 1979. And then now this four meter telescope, very interesting revolution came in 1989 when the new te te technology telescope came into the um, picture and that is very big, very small you can see compared to the 14 meter diameter size uh, dome, you can see the how small telescope is then the size of the telescope is also uh, small. So the technology also um, um, does matter for the big telescopes. As I told you, due to the Earth atmosphere, we cannot have the very good seeing, very good, uh, we cannot uh, have the good resolution. But if you, uh, if you launch any telescope uh, beyond the Earth atmosphere, we will have the very good seeing and very good uh, light gathering power because there is no attenuation. So uh, in, two, uh, in 1990, 2.4 meter Hubble uh, Space Telescope was launched to study um, the uh, galaxies and um, stars uh, which are located very far from us. Right? And these are, you can see, 10 meter CAC telescope. This was built by uh, Americans in CAC and two telescopes and these telescopes also used for the interferometry. As I told you, the resolving power is equal to 1.22 lambda upon d. This distance or the, the diameter, if we increase, right, that can be uh, also increased by uh, keeping two uh, interferometry. You might have heard the resolution can be increased if we put two uh, telescope far away, and that d um, acts as a diameter distance between two telescope. So this, uh, these these telescopes also used for the higher resolution in the interferometry mode, and also Southern African Large Telescope 10 meters. It is very difficult to make, as I told you, a single mirror of 10 meter size. But um, the bigger telescope, bigger telescope are being in segmented mirror. Means people what they are, they are making the telescope of mirror of small size, and then they are joining them. So that these um, uh, 10, 1 meter class of ten, about 10 mirrors are being uh, uh, used to have the 10 meter uh, class, uh, this 10 meter size telescope in Southern African large telescope. This telescope is uh, in situated in South African Astronomical Observatory, uh, South Africa, and they have a size southern line and it's very good size. You can see here the blue sky here. For 8 meter, very large telescope, right? This is also segmented telescope, right? So uh, there are four VLTs. As I told you, that people use these telescope for the interferometry to have the uh, to in, improve the resolution. So these are telescope uh, six meter 
and the four uh, VLTs uh, correspond to the six meter telescope, they are still operational. And also in near future, the 30 meter telescope, you might have heard that India is also part of this, this 30 meter telescope is going to be installed. Um, there's some issues with the site, but the, basically this telescope was supposed to install in Hawaii. Um, but now they are going to, um, uh, what I heard that they are going to um, f fix it somewhere in La Palma, wherever um, they decide, right? And the other giant magnet telescope, this, uh, people are um, going to install this telescope from the, their private resources, right? 30 meter, uh, this about giant meter telescope, this about 24 meter, and it's going to be operational by 2025. And biggest telescope coming into the um, this Earth is 39.3 meter telescope. This extremely European, extremely large, European extremely large telescope. And this telescope is going to be operational by between 2025 and 2030. So you can see, you can see with my talk that how people are interested in optical astronomy. In, um, in to know about the uh, where we where from where we originated. What is the um, what is the basic behind this universe? How the universe was created? Where we are now? Are there similar type of the um, uh, life? So people are going to search such type of the uh, answer of such questions. So also as I told you, there's uh, not only the telescope, the sites also does matter. So here the La Silla is, uh, is one size in Manuaki in the United States, you can see here the how this is the, um, uh, this, um, uh, you can see the hub of the telescope. Various countries install their telescope there because the site is very good. Very laminar um, uh, this outflow, there is no very less turbulence, very good seeing, 0.5 arc second. So that's why what people do, they people in around the globe, people search such type of the sites and then finally they put the telescope and different people uh, from the various country, they come across, uh, from the, uh, they come together and then they um, install their telescopes there. So also this Manuaki, this is the astronomical, I saw, I told you this uh, astronomical heaven. So this three point, this 30 meter telescope is supposed to be installed here. You can see how many telescopes are there, right? So, uh, so, uh, so this um, like as tourist places, there are few tourist places and most of the people wants to go there, like as Nanita. That's why I'm also inviting you come here. This is also tourist place, also the place for the um, uh, observation astronomy, right? So people have uh, discovered such places which are very good for the uh, observation astronomy. Right? So, sir, with this, I close my, um, I stop my presentation. Thank you, Josie, sir. So, we really heard very informative, very interesting, and motivational lecture with application of Dr. Santosh Ji of Eris Nanita. And very so I would be uh, one more question. Sure, sir. Yeah, one more. Uh, if I would be happy to give another talk if you, if you like, if students and other like, that will sure. be in audio video mode. The, here I have not uh, insert any audio video. That is on the seismology. If you like, and I, I can give you sometime next month or so, according sure, to the um, this uh, your ability, sir. Right. Even we can arrange some uh, uh, virtual tour tour of your laboratory. Yes. Even Aries, yes, you sir. can just yes. visit yes. through yes. camera and you can be student yes. can see. That sure. will be marvelous. Sure. Sure. Why not? Yes. Why not? Why not? Yeah, that will be good. And I will request yes. Dr. Vijay Rajji, please give a vote of thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, on the behalf of Department of Physics, Central University of South Bihar, I would like to thank our esteemed like speaker, uh, Dr. Santos Joshi Ji. Uh, with his heart and giving us such an inspiring, inspiring and motivational talk. I would also like to thank our beloved HOD, our Professor Venkatesh Singh, for our all word of wisdom. We will ever remain grateful to you and thank you for being with us today. Heartful thanks uh, goes to all our CSB faculty members. And also outside of the CVSB, who always stand with us, we, we feel we proud. 
and thank you for uh, making us, uh, making us feel happy with your presence to this event. I also thank wonderful students who have turned up in such great number, not only from the CSP but also from other institutes. Last but not the least, I thank all the students for showing their interest in this event. Thank again. Thank, thank you again. very much. Thank you very much. To all who is uh, who is in here. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. So thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, it's my really it's my really great honor because uh, everyone you. do not get uh, such opportunity to deliver talk honestly. Thank you, sir. And thank also you, sir. the uh, main 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 uh, strength of the, the talk is audience. I am really thankful to all the audience. If no audience, I cannot speak. I cannot speak to the wall. Yes. Right. Correct. So I am really thankful to the all audience, uh, Bengtesh sir and Vijay uh, uh, Raji and all the and I would be happy to um, give my to exchange my knowledge and transfer my whatever I have. I can Thank because you. I am not. You are not paying. I am not paying anything. Okay. So it's my. It will enrich. It will enrich my knowledge even with such nice questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank dear participants okay. and colleagues, that is all for now. We will see you next week on August 18 with another wonderful speaker, Professor Sunit Singh of Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. He is internationally well known molecular immunology and will speak on COVID 19 from pandemic to infodemic. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep thinking. Goodbye. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Josie. Thank you, Josie.